Hey, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing Forever Home from Birdwood Games. Forever Home is a one to five player of, I'd say, pattern building and set collection themed around dogs. You're collecting dogs, you're homing them in various areas, and you're trying to score points as efficiently as possible across the course of the game. The general idea of the game is you're going to have your own personal grid, you're going to have a supply of both cards, and I have the setup just like for one person over here, but this would be more middle of the table. You can have the specific ways that the areas score. You can have your city, suburbs, countryside, and foster home that all score differently and can score differently depending on which cards you had in play, and on your turn you're taking taking two actions from a set of three possible actions. They're all printed on your board. You can take any two combination of these. You can take the same one twice, different ones. There's only three actions to take. But the general idea is you're trying to gather cars, gather, gather dogs, put them onto your board, and then eventually homing them based on patterns on those cards, and then trying to be mindful of the home scoring, as well as this own separate player board scoring that's going to define where you want certain dogs. That's a lot of information. Let's go through a few actions and then walk you through a few scoring examples so you can see how it goes. You're going to go ahead and take, again, three possible actions. You either take a scoring card, so this is going to give you a way to score patterns, or you take a dog putting into your grid, or you go ahead and uh, move a dog onto your grid. Now when you have the right set matching these patterns, you can go ahead and score the cards. So for example, if let's pretend over here I have these cards, let's pretend I have this card in my hand just for simplicity so I could uh, show you a turn one scoring over here. On turn one, I'm going to go ahead and place this card, I'll place it over here, I'll place this one over here like so, that's two actions, and look at that, I have two of the same type of dog, so I'll immediately go ahead and score those, and and that's going to allow me to home one of those two dogs, meaning one of these is going to stay on the board, but I could home one of them and this card is worth a point. In general, that's the way these cards play out. You home a certain number of the dogs from the pattern and you get a certain number of points depending on that card. So for example, this one over here scores you zero points, but it homes three of the four dogs. And the pattern here is two of the same, a blank space, two different cards. In general, the patterns are pretty easy to follow. So that's kind of the sequence here. So you've seen two of the actions already, take a card, take a tile, and then move a dog, which can be helpful when you're trying to complete a tile, being able to move dogs around can also help you out. But again, in this case, we'll take this, we'll put it, and we'll put it into a home. It's early in the game. Let's go ahead and put it into the countryside and see, uh, let's put it into the city over here and see how that scores. Now, the way the scoring is going to work, now that we've kind of walked through the sequence, the way the scoring is going to work is each of these cards score differently depending on where you home these dogs. So, for example, the city is going to score points for having different colored dogs in the city. If you have five different colored dogs, you get nine points. So up to five different colors will score points over here. In the suburbs, you get specific sets of dogs. So, exactly, arguably, I should actually put this in the suburbs because we need that orange dog to be able to get that maximum six points over there. A red dog is worth one point, a red and blue is worth three, and a red, blue, and orange is worth six. And you can get these multiple times, by the way. Over here, you get six points for the the same color dog and in the foster home you simply get a point per dog that's always going to be consistent the rest of the cards vary but this one's always going to be consistent so that's gonna be one of the ways you're trying to score the second way you're trying to score already is like i said already these cards over here they have points in the bottom and the third way is over here on this board where you have different dogs put up here as far as where you want them so for example over here, if whoever has the most pink dogs on their player board left at the end of the game gets three points and then one point for yellow. Over here, you're going to want dogs in homes, so three, two, or one. And over here, you want dogs in a variety of homes. So who has the most green dogs across the four types of homes, city, suburbs, countryside, and foster home, that person will get three points. And so that's the way this additional scoring works over here. And between the three, you're trying to score as many points as possible. That's basically it. There's three actions. You're trying to score points based on where the dogs are. You're trying to get those those dogs and home until game end triggers and see who has the most points. The last thing is the advanced game mode, and that's aside from the solo mode, there's a solo mode as well. But the last thing is the advanced game mode, which I already have set up over here. This is the advanced shelter. This gives you certain actions you can go. So for example, if I place this dog over here, I can then slide this dog down, you know, and then possibly go over here, which will then trigger another dog scoring or whatnot. But you're gonna go ahead in general, being able to utilize these actions on the board to swap dogs, to swap cards, or to move things just by placing things onto the board. So as you place them, they move, and that's basically basically an advanced board. Uh, lastly, I'll note just for the record over here that all of these refill as you take them. So as I took dogs, they should immediately refill both for the dogs and for the cars. You always have four in play at any given time. And that is how you play Forever Home by Birdwood Games, which takes us to the review, starting off with ease of play. Rule looks very straightforward, very clear, very understandable, no issues there. Gameplay is probably around half an hour or so. It's not a long game. It is a little longer at higher player counts, just more time there. But it's not that long a game experience. It's a very simple and easy and straightforward game experience. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, starting off with what I like, which is in general, this game is just trying to give you pattern matching and score optimization. And then combined with the variable homes gives you a degree of replayability between the variable homes, between the way these, uh, these dogs come out over here. So it's ultimately just about trying to score points based on the criteria 
bad play. Now, there's not a lot of things that are going to go into the category of what I like here because while I enjoy the game, it's fairly straightforward, it's a little on the light side, there's not a lot of things that really strongly stand out about it. It is a good game with pattern matching and score optimization, and I like those concepts in general, but that's kind of where I tap out on the things I like. As far as things I don't like in the game, again, not strong, not, not a lot of big critiques either here. This game is kind of very vanilla for me across the board. Not a lot of things that offend, not a lot of things that are amazing, it's just a good straightforward game. I'll say that I did think or I did hope that the board actions for the advanced mode would matter a bit more, and they didn't seem to. Past that, it's really just that the game is a light game. It is very light, very accessible, very straightforward. I think there's a target audience for this game. I don't know if I'm in that target audience. It's too light and straightforward in this genre for me. I prefer games that do a lot more when you have this score matching, pattern optimization, all that kind of stuff. I want a lot more going into my thought process, and this one I felt was just more straightforward. So there's not a lot that I love, and there's not a lot that I'm offended by. It's okay. It's an okay game. It does the job. As far as I can see, others not liking, it's a very pasted on theme. I'll say that. It is a pasted on theme. Like, I do think that, I mean, Birdwood Games, Birdwood Games has, um, dog park i believe which has a much more thematic integration this really is just you know there's dogs to place them in homes it's i mean again i don't mind that at all for myself i'm not here for the theme i'm here for the gameplay but if you are looking for the theme i think this is not the most heavily dog themed game I'll also say that sometimes in the game, especially towards end game, you do have luck of the draw being a factor. If you're trying to get that one extra purple dog to fulfill whatever scoring requirement over here or to fill that last orange, or even just get your fifth color over here, there definitely is luck of the draw as far as what comes out of the butt, what comes out of the bag. And it's not a big deal, but it's a small, I say more towards the end game, those last few draws can be a factor as far as being able to score those extra points or not. As far as final thoughts on Forever Home. And I recognize this is one of the shorter reviews I do on the channel because there's just not a ton to get into. This Forever Home is a fairly basic, straightforward game. It checks the box of being an okay game that does what it needs to do. I think this is the kind of game that if the uh, average person picked this up in Target or Walmart, they'd probably be happy, be pretty happy with the experience because I think it's a fine experience. But I do think there are just better games out there. I think there are better games across the board as far as uh, get better gateway games, better heavy strategy games. This is a game that it's biggest positive attribute is that it doesn't really do much to offend and it does what it does well. I've had fun with it, I just don't know if I need to play it. For me this is a 3 out of 5. It is not bad but it's very very light and just doesn't have a lot of things that stand out about it in either direction, positive or negative. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, I'd recommend Sagrada. If you want that placement aspect with multiple ways of scoring and whatnot, Sagrada gives you a much more interesting challenge as, a, as far as the game goes, while still being very much in the gateway category. Similarly, I think Tiny Towns is also going to give you that gateway experience, but again, gives you a degree of trying to gather things into a grid, make certain patterns, uh, operating more with a bingo mechanic where you're all operating at the same time, forcing more of a puzzle, while still being very gateway friendly, but I think far more compelling with a ton of variability in the experience as well. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.